right above us here as well. Oh, that's super cool. BA. How do they fly? I know how to fly them. And you think about everybody who's on board. Yeah. All the weight, all the cargo, all yeah. the bags, all the everything that's on board. Just blows my mind. And psh, up they go. Planes are just awesome. awesome. Planes are cool. They are. Yeah. So we're heading off to East Midlands Airport now. We're going to go meet an FAA. He's an examiner. An FAA, yeah, that's right. FAA examiner. So he's an FAA representative. They call them in the U.S. designated pilot examiners. Designated pilot examiners. Uh, a guy called Adam. We're going to go meet him today, and it's kind of the final step in a process that's taken around. To be honest, I thought it would take a lot longer, and I'm not just saying that. But it only took just over two months. But basically, a process to get my FAA license so I can then legally fly as pilot and command November registered so aircraft registered in the US November registered air aircraft like this one yeah. as pilot in command now there's a few layers to it and we'll talk about that in a sec but Philippe helped me with the process so thank you first of all for you're welcome that. you guided <laughs> me through it but I've got to be honest it was actually quite straightforward now obviously it depends on the country you've got an existing license in and the thing you're going to have to get used to is forms. So you basically, a lot of it is just filling out forms. So, part 61.75. Did you see I had to look down and look at that because <laughs> I couldn't remember it. This is where you need to, you, you can jump in and talk more about this because you know this. You I know don't this know this by heart. Oh, you know this better There's than me. There's a big, though. big book that has yeah. them all listed. Is there? Yeah. All right, because you are. Seven traffic right, two o'clock, five miles southbound in the gate, 2,300. Oh, we're looking over for 557. Oh, I've got him. He's just passing us 3 o'clock now, just oh, on yep. top of the wing. Good eye, good eye, yep. That's the one. So yeah, the FAA makes the rules very, makes the transparency, the ability to access the rules very easy, as I've found compared to other uh, regulators. So they publish every year, it's the FAR AIM. It's just this big book, you know, so pilots updated. Now most people just get it on their iPad, you know. But it makes access to the rules very easy. So, okay. and it's broken down, so 61 has to do with airman certification, 91 has to do with the rules of the air. Okay. So very, very easy to... That's how you navigate right. through the docu document as well. Exactly. Yeah. 5557, five, request your type of approach at East Midlands. Uh, stand by, number 557. Well, what do you think? Why don't we just do visual? Yeah, if it's scattered 4,000. Why do we need to complicate this? Right, or here's another VRP, Melton Malbury. Oh, or yeah. Botsford. I love English names. Melton Mowbray, I think, that one. That's what, do you know what? That's where they make the um, pork pies. Really? That's Melton Mowbray is famous for making pork pies. Uh, that's the most useless fact I've, I've given you I so far. It. I love it. Now, in certain countries, you need to do a sort of a first level of verification with your own uh, local authority before contacting the FAA. So with CASA, there was a form that I had to fill out with CASA the Civil Aviation Safety Authority in Australia. That was just a case of filling out a form, a $50 charge as well. I noticed the FAA didn't charge for it, but CASA did in Australia. So decide what you want from that information. Uh, that actually surprises me. <laughs> I figured this is not the FAA other way around. <laughs> no. So they get their piece. FAA have charged me nothing for this whole process. Um, there'll be a charge with the examiner, but we can chat about that later. But uh, CASA, there was just a $50 Australian dollar fee for the verification. So CASA basically get your information, they get your medical and your license information, put that together basically in a package which is sent to the FAA. You then fill out a form with the FAA, they put that together, and they told me, I wrote this down actually, they said it was gonna be 45 to 90 working days, 45 to 90 days, I apologize, between receiving the application and getting what's called a verification letter which is then what you take to the examiner, which is what we're doing today. Which you know, looks like this. Which looks like, ah, here's one you prepared earlier. Ta -da! Which looks like this, so you get a... Turns out Steph really does have a license. I know, do you know what? I don't trust CASA, but the FA says so, must be true. <laughs> <laughs> I wrote these dates down, because I thought this was interesting. They said 90 days, so like three months, basically, it's gonna take. I submitted it to the FAA on the 25th of April, and I got the verification letter on the 9th of May. Wow, that's a really decent turnaround that's time. That's a pretty quick 45 to 90 days. It is a very quick 45 to 90 days. A few of my friends were telling me stories that, oh, you know, uh, FAA, CASA is going to take ages. No, turned around really quickly. So I was really impressed, actually. Really impressed. So then you get your, it doesn't end there. Then you get your verification <laughs> letter. 
and then what you have to do, oh, help me with it, it's uh, IACRA. Yeah, IACRA, all the licensing with the FAA is, is done digitally. Yep. Right? And the, the great thing is, so you fill in this application on IACRA, which is the platform, and then the examiner can see that application right away, right? Your instructor can see it right away, make amendments, etc. right? But then when you do your flight test, or in this case, it's not a flight test, it's just a meeting so you can validate your, your, your licenses, then you get issued your license then and there. Yeah. They print you immediately your license. It's a temporary one, right? Yeah. And then it goes, then you get your plastic one from the FAA 90 days later, 45 to 90 days later. Yeah. Or, that or, one's two, actually, or two weeks. Or two weeks. Yeah. <laughs> so it's all done online, which is really, really nice. You don't have to submit any paperwork to the FAA, uh, you know, things get lost in the post. So once you've done the registration through, or the application, sorry, through IACRA, you get a number, an FTN number. So your FTN number is just your login. Yeah. That's all it really is. That's all it is. Yeah, so it's your unique, unique login so that, so that the examiner or the instructor can find you, right? And then you'll have an application number specific to this application that we're doing today. Once you've got your documentation together, your FTN number, package it all together, and that's what we're doing now is heading off to East Midlands Airport to meet Adam. Um, now, the fee, there is a fee for the examiner, which I will, I like to um, be as honest as I can on this channel, just to let everyone know what the fee is. £395. Now, importantly as well, this license and doing it this way will allow me to fly a November registered aircraft VFR only. So I still can't fly IFR. I'd need to do additional examinations yeah. if that if I wanted to fly IFR. Yeah, so you I'm only converted over the PPL. So you'd have to do a, just a ground test to do the IR conversion, which also, again, you have to do that in the US, okay. which is a bit of a pain. But uh, then that would convert over the IR. But it also, right, and this is the biggest, the bigger of the two limitations, is it's only valid if your CASA license is valid. So if you let your CASA license expire, or you don't maintain the medical, or you, know, you don't maintain your flight experience, your recency of flight experience, then the FA-1 is also invalidated. It's also invalidated. Yeah. Which makes sense. That does make yeah. sense, yeah. yeah. And the reason Philippe's flying and he's going to do the landing into East Midlands is because if you watched the last video on the channel and you saw me trying to land an aircraft at Schiphol Airport <laughs> in Amsterdam, I Don't think I'm, I'm going to watch you. Uh, you can You're going to judge me? No, 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 not judge. No, I'm going to get some tips. <laughs> the landing was fine. That landing, if you watched the video, was with a stonk and crosswind. Oh, you're, you're very kind. And it was gusty. And it was still a good landing. We may have floated, but the touchdown itself was graceful. You know what? He's a great instructor and a very kind man as well. <laughs> uh, everyone liked the bit when you said to me, no pressure, but don't damage my landing gear, to about 300 feet above. <laughs> they so, didn't like that. So no pressure, Philippe, but everyone's watching you landing. <laughs> as we turn final, slowly decelerating. Uh, to the the like four request, actually. A little side slip, uh, just to keep it interesting. Nice. Side slipping. Help us lose out two without increasing our uh, airspeed. All right, what we're doing is basically we're throwing the airplane into the into the wind there. Yeah. Increasing the drag profile. But keeping our speed constant. Yeah, keeping the speed constant. Exactly. So still managing our speed with our pitch here coming into land. But still, still what we're doing. All right, so power to idle there, and we're going to command, we're just going to let this thing naturally, naturally land. A little bit of wind from the right, so you'll see my right aileron's in a little bit. A little bit of uh, stall warning horn there. God damn it. That's what we need to see. Seven, second left via mic. Second left on mic, never ever 557. There was a small part of me hoping that you'd cock that up. <laughs> Could have been better. Did you? Wait, really? <laughs> You're just saying that. Okay, we just landed at East Midlands Airport, and you may be wondering then, well, hang on a minute, why are you now standing in Wickham Air Park at Aero Expo? Like almost a week later. Well, 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 here's the thing. We couldn't actually film the part with Adam, who's the FAA examiner in the room. But basically what we did is we sat down, presented the documentation, showed him the originals. He checked that they were correct against the copies that we gave him. I digitally signed the application on the ACRA website. And once that was all done, uh, Adam went off basically. He went for about five minutes and came back with this. 
And this is a temporary airman certificate. It's basically a piece of paper that allows me to fly under the FAA regulations, November registered aircraft as a private pilot VFR. Now the actual one, the plastic version of this, you know, the small card that you would have seen as the FAA license, that will come through in the next few weeks. That gets sent to your home address. So that'll be waiting for me back in Australia when I get home. But for the rest of the videos you see on this channel with me and Philippe flying around Europe in November, double five, triple five, quadruple five, seven, that's all gonna be based on me being able to fly as pilot in command uh, under the new FAA license that I've got. I actually don't, like, I actually don't mind November 55557. It's actually quite easy to say on the radio. I just don't want Philippe to know that I quite like it. Don't tell him.